to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in matthew chapter 5 verse number 28 jesus said he who looks in a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart friend we welcome you today to our study of the truth about pornography Today we're thinking about a subject that many people, especially many young people, in our world are plagued with. What is God's truth on the subject of pornography? We're so glad that you joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you to get your Bible, to have it ready, because we want to let God and His Word be the deciding factor on our series of lessons about the truth. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ, the Lord's Church in your area. We'd love for you to stop by and visit one of our assemblies, uh, whatever time they may start on Sunday morning and Sunday night, Wednesday for Bible study. You'd be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people in the Lord's Church who are concerned about God's Word, who love people, and who only want to help men and women get to heaven. And so if you'd like to have a Bible study, you'd like to know more about God's Word, to, uh, to study the Word of God with someone on a various subject, please visit the Lord's Church in your area, and they'd be glad to help you. Friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we also want to help you in your desire to know God and His will better. Friend, we have lessons on every book of the Old and New Testament. We have a wide variety of lessons on topical subjects, nearly every topic you can imagine, and they're all available to you free of charge all the time. You can access our website and download those from our media request form. Streaming is available as well. If you'd like to have them on DVD to watch in your home or on your computer, or if you'd like to have a CD to listen to those, we provide those to you free of charge as well. Just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can fill out a media request form. We'll be glad to send that to you. Or you can call us or write to us at the information given, and we'll be glad to help you in any way that we can. Our desire is simply to help men and women point them toward the Word of God and help them to know God and His desire to save them and so that they can live a life that's pleasing to Him. Also, in the fast-paced world in which we live in, don't forget about our apps for the smartphone. Both Apple and, and Android apps are available from the Gospel of Christ. You can uh, download those from the respective uh, app stores, and they're a great way to study God's Word in a fast-paced world as well. It's not a pretty subject that we're thinking about this morning, but it's a needed subject. Today we think about the idea of pornography. What do we mean when we're talking about pornography? Matthew 19, 9, Jesus said, Whoever divorces his wife except for fornication and marries another commits adultery. That word for fornication is the Greek word pornea. And that word pornea means illicit sexual activity, unlicensed, unauthorized sexual activities. The only licensed place by God is inside the bounds of marriage, and so we're talking about sexual actions of various natures outside of the bonds of marriage. And then, of course, the word uh, graffiti, graffiti is implied in that as well, graphe, the word for writing, and so we're talking about the drawing, the writing, the images, the videos of immoral, illicit, ungodly actions. Pornography is definitely a problem that we face in our world today. 
Uh, you find hard porn on the internet, you find porn videos, porn sites, magazines like Hustler and Playboy, anybody, and here's how it's a problem. You know, simply say, I, well, it's not a problem for me. If you've got a smartphone, you've got a smart TV, uh, it's definitely a problem for you and your children. Nearly anybody can access that very easily on the internet or through TV today as well. And then there's not just the hard porn, there'd be that which we consider soft porn as well maybe. You've got Abercrombie and Fitch catalogs, even flyers from Walmart that show uh, things they ought not to show, romance novels, television and commercials. There is a host of things that are designed to promote people with lustful thoughts and lustful desires that the Christian has to be careful about. Someone recently mentioned to me that at a recent Bible camp, uh, they asked anonymously for a large group of people, what's the one thing you're struggling with? 95% said pornography. Young men and women, mainly young men, but young men and women were struggling with dealing with the pornography problem. And it's something that our young people are having to face today. A friend, I want you to realize that a lot of the pornography industry, it's about money. It is a billion dollar industry a year. Did you know this? Revenue from pornography is larger than the revenues of professional football, baseball, and basketball combined. It exceeds the combined revenue of ABC, CBS, and NBC together. Child pornography alone generates $3 billion annually, and the whole industry is somewhere around $12 billion. There are nearly 9,000 theaters, or 900 theaters, showing pornographic films, and more than 15,000 adult bookstores and video stores that offer pornographic material. At one time, there were more porn stores then there were McDonald's in the United States by a margin of three to one. If you don't think this is a problem, that it's a billion dollar industry, we need to wake up and realize people are making money hand over fist as it relates to the porn industry. But today we think about what does the Bible say? What is wrong with pornography? And we offer these ideas. Why is pornography wrong? Friend, pornography is wrong and it's sinful because it deteriorates the morality that God and His people, that God's people ought to have. Let me give you some statistics that relate to pornography and other sexual crimes. For example, Michigan State Police in a time period between 1956 and 1979 found that of the 38,000 sexual assault cases in Michigan, 41% of those cases pornographic material was viewed just prior to the crime happening. Sherry Height found that 67% of males who admitted that they had wanted to rape a woman reported reading pornographic magazines. Sociologists Murray Strauss and Larry Barron of the University of New Hampshire found that rape rates are highest in states which have high sales of sex magazines and where law enforcement is lax on pornography laws. 80, listen to this. 86% of convicted rapists admit to regular use of porn and 75% of rapists admit to simulating acts they viewed while watching pornography. Friend, it is a serious problem that people face today. But not only is there a, a correlation between pornography and sexual crimes, there's a correlation between pornography and violent crime. 81% of recent mass murderers admit to using pornography extensively. The crime rate increases two times to seven times wherever pornography is sold. Dr. James Dobson interviewed a notorious serial killer Ted Bundy, one of the nation's most notorious serial killers. On the day before his execution, Ted Bundy said this, most damage, the most damaging kinds of pornography are those that involve violence and sexual violence because the wedding of those two forces, as I know only too well, brings behavior that is just too, too terrible to describe. A man who was involved in that, he recognized it makes a person's morals worse 
not better. You see, God wants us to make good choices. God wants our mind to be pure, to be holy, to be right, to think on things that are good, and pornography is only going to bring a person's morals down in every way. Why else is pornography wrong? Friend, pornography is sinful because it pollutes the mind. I want you to think about, again, the words of Matthew 5, 28. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her, he's already committed adultery with her in his heart. It's, it's not that the adultery is necessarily re the real action of adultery. That's not what Jesus is talking about. But he's played that through. He's lusted for her. He's imagined that in his mind. And a person's mind becomes unholy when they do that. I, I am to bring every thought into captivity. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 5. I'm to think on things that are good and pure and holy. I'm not to let the devil have a control of my mind. But when I think about pornography, and when I view pornography, my mind is made unholy. Pornography, as it relates to polluting the mind, it's going to lead to lying and dishonesty and deception. Revelation 21.8 says, All liars will have their part which leads to the lake of fire and brimstone. If I'm involved in pornography, that's not something I want others to know. That's something I want to keep a secret. That's something I'm going to deceive and lie and hide and try to protect so that nobody else knows about that. Friend, is that the holy life? Lying, deception, cheat, is that the way God wants me to live my life? Again, it pollutes the mind. And friend, it, it is directly linked to secrecy and those things done in shame and darkness. Again, you're not going to stand on the street corner you're not going to sit out in the living room with the family. You're not out in the open going to watch porn or pornography. It's done in shame. It's done in secret, and it's done in darkness, as it were. And Jesus said, those type of things are of the devil. They're of darkness, and they pollute the mind on so many different levels. And friend, when you open Pandora's box, when you open that, you're creating a whole host of other problems in a person's life. But why else is pornography sinful? Friend, pornography is sinful because it can directly affect and can destroy marriages. Think about this with me. In 2003, at the meeting of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, uh, marriage lawyers, divorce lawyers, two-thirds of the 350 divorce lawyers who attended said the Internet played a significant role in divorces in the past year, with excessive interest on, in online porn contributing to more than half of such cases. Half of those divor divorce lawyers that I'll talk to said half their cases were caused by porn. A study done by Don Zillman at the University of Indiana and Jennings Bryant at the University of Houston revealed this. Repeated exposure to pornography resulted in a decreased satisfaction with one's sexual partner, with the partner's sexuality, and with the partner's sexual curiosity. There was a decrease in the valuation of faithfulness and a major increase in the importance of sex without attachment. We've got people hooking up all the time today, people who all they want is sex, no attachment, and friend, pornography. That's kind of what it leads you toward. No love, no faithfulness, no real meaning to it, just an impulse and a feeling. And friend, when that comes into the marriage, that causes real problems. See, my friend, the Bible teaches married couples should be satisfied with one another. And when you're involved in things that are pornographic, when you're looking at images and watching videos and using that as your outlet, your valuation and your satisfaction, satisfaction with your spouse is not going to be what God designed it to be. Look in Proverbs chapter 5. I want you to see how God designed men and women to fulfill that desire. And although the language is rather clear, rather bold, listen to what the writer says in verses 19 and 20. As a loving deer and a graceful doe, this is talking about one's wife, let her breast satisfy you at all times, always be enraptured with her love. For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress? 
When a person's married and they're watching that type of videos or looking at that type of, gra type of graphics, the interest for one's mate is not what it ought to be. And friend, that's not what God designed. Be enraptured with your wife. Let her satisfy you. That's God's plan. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable. The bad sexual relation undefiled. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And so we speak out against porno pornography because it destroys the marriage. It creates a, a lack of trust. If one partner knows the other has a porn problem, that creates a lack of trust. And it can cause one to be unfaithful mentally to his spouse. But then as we think about pornography, and I hope you'll listen real carefully, pornography is such a, a serious problem because it is an insidious threat to children. Did you know that 82% of child molesters admit imitating sexual behavior they saw in pornographic material, 82%. For example, uh, 1,400 sexual molestation cases in Louisville, Kentucky, between July and uh, February of 1980 and 84, uh, adult pornography was connected with each incident and child pornography with the majority of them. The average age of first exposure to internet pornography used to be about 11 years old. It's probably more than that now, or younger than that now. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children revealed in a study that 40% of arrested child pornography possessors had both sexually victimized children and were in possession of child pornography. Now friend, when we think about the connection and the threat to children, it's a serious problem. Those arrested in the United States between 2000 and 2001 for uh, ch acts against children, 83% had images involving children between 6 and 12, 30%, 39% had images involving children between 3 and 5, and 19% had images of infants and toddlers under age 3. 140,000 child internet porno pornography images are, are, are posted to the internet over six to eight weeks every year. You can imagine how that affects children and families. And so when we think about this idea, let's realize that it is a serious problem to children. In fact, a study done of convicted child molesters found this. 77% of those who molested boys and 87% of those who molested girls admitted to the use of pornography in the commission of their crimes. Friend, you talk about something that is damaging, something that's destructive, and something that hurts our children. Pornography is a serious problem to our children. In fact, when you think about as it relates to Scripture, think about these ideas. Pornography is a threat to our children because it takes away their innocence. Matthew 18, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them. Of such is the kingdom of God. They're pure. They're innocent. They're holy in the sight of God. But when a child looks at pornography, that innocence, that purity, begins to erode with every image and every time they see that. Later, in fact, it can lead to sexual promiscuity and being involved in acts that are not good. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 tells us that sin, once it enters the mind and enters the body, it's like a sickness, it's like a cancer, it's like a gangrene that can destroy, destroy a person's life. And so along with that many other mental health and psychological disorders in adults, there's a direct link between child molestation and pornography. Those who are often molested their molesters used or were abused and saw pornography at a very young age. And so this is something we definitely want to keep away from our children. But friend, as we think about the filth of pornography, let's also realize that pornography erodes one's self-control. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12, I will not be brought under the power of any. And yet... Pornography is an addiction. That's been clearly proven throughout the years that just like alcohol, just like drugs, just like a food addiction, pornography controls your life in many ways. You're brought under the power of it, and a Christian 
ought to have more self-control than that. It, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, we're to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The person who's viewing those images, looking at those videos, his thoughts are not brought captive unto Christ. He's being controlled and his mind is being controlled by evil sin and the devil. Romans 13 verse 14, Paul said, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. That's how Christian, his life, should be filled with the Lord and his desires. But if I'm looking at porn, the flesh has got its hold on me. The devil's got his claws in me, and that's a bad place to be. 1 Peter 2.11, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. What, a Christian, what should a Christian do? Rather than looking at that and rather than viewing that, you need to abstain from it. You need to turn away from it. Don't get involved in those things. Galatians 5, verse 22 through 24, of the many fruits of the Spirit mentioned there, one is self-control. And so we need to have the self-control to let God and His Word control our life. But friend, as we consider pornography and the problems related to it, let's also realize that pornography is wrong because it violates the purity principle. Matthew 5 verse 8, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in spirit. 1 Timothy 5 verse 22, Keep yourself pure. Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4 says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in His holy place? He who has clean, hand, clean hands and a pure heart. Without holiness, no one shall see God. Hebrews 12, 14, As he who called you is holy, you also be holy. Friend, I'm to be pure in heart. I'm to do my best to keep myself pure. I'm to try to live a good and holy and pure life. And yet, pornography, it violates that idea. It violates the purity principle. Would you say that someone who's looking at pornography or watching a triple X movie that that's a good, pure thing to be doing. They're living a good, holy, pure life, and we want... No. We realize that's wrong. We realize that's not pure. If God wants me to be pure, I need to avoid things like that. Well, let's then offer some helps. What can a person... What can we do to prevent a pornography problem? First, don't open Pandora's box, even one time. It's tempting for every person. It's an allurement, it's a desire of the flesh that uh, if fulfilled in the right place, marriage is good and holy and right. But friend, don't, don't go there. Don't, don't open Pandora's box. Don't partake in that. Avoid that. Do your best not to let yourself and your children get in a situation like that. Secondly, I need to know. If I believe in God, I believe in the Bible, I want to go to heaven, I need to realize pornography and the viewing it, it's sinful. That's sinful action. Whoever lusts after a woman, he's already committed adultery in her with, his, with his heart in her. And so lust and adultery, pornography, that's sinful. And God doesn't approve of that at all. Be very careful. What you watch on television, what you, and especially today, what you view on the Internet. It's hard to watch a lot of TV today without seeing some type of images that are pornographic that are going to make people lust after other people in a wrong way. Did you know that according to a uh, Sex on TV 4, a Kaiser Family Foundation study, the number of television sexual scenes has almost doubled since the year 2000. 70 to 80 percent of all shows have some sexual content, averaging five sexual scenes per hour compared to about 56 percent in 1998. Friend, it, as we said, it's hard. It's very hard to watch TV and not see some type of pornographic images that are designed to make people lust in their heart for others. Well, what then can we do if somebody already has? You probably know people. I know people who might have a pornography problem. It's a serious problem. A lot of folks have it. How do you help somebody deal with a pornography problem? Let's offer some helps today. Number one, you've got to realize you've got a problem. I've got to realize looking at that's not right. That's not good. That's not pure. That's not holy. It's a problem. It's sinful. 
And I need to know that's not something that a person ought to do. Secondly, the person who has that problem needs God's help. You need to pray about that. Prayer definitely will help. James 5, 16, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person overcomes much. We're not saying prayer is going to solve, the, the, the prayer is going to magically, you know, somehow make that disappear, but I need all the help I can get, and God definitely promises prayer will help during those times. I've got to learn to control my mind and my thinking. How do I do that? Think on things which are good, pure, holy, upright, just, noteworthy, of good reputation. A big part of con dealing with the pornography problem is to learn to think about the right. If I'm, not th if I'm in a dead spot and I'm not thinking about anything, there's more of a temptation. So think about the right things. People don't like, we don't like to say this in society. We don't like to think about this a lot today, but I have to learn to deny the flesh. Basically, I have to tell myself no. Galatians 5, verse 24, I've got to have self-control. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 20, number 27, Paul said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection daily. I have to say no to the flesh, and I have to tell myself, that's not right. You can't do that. I may need to seek help and accountability from those closest to me, whether it be your parents, friends, neighbors, co-workers, spouse, whoever it is, you need to ask people to help you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13, but I need the help and the encouragement of other people as well. And then ultimately, and friend, we're not saying this just to scare, but I've got to realize if I continue in that sin, it will cost me my eternal soul, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. And so if a person has a porn, pornography problem, get help. Find those who can maybe give counseling and therapy. Find people you can be accountable to and get into God's Word. And focus on that and let your mind and your heart be filled with good things from God and His teaching. And so we're so glad today that you've joined us for our study on this series of lessons about truth. We've got four more lessons coming up in this series. We want to encourage you to continue to watch those as we seek God's will and God's truth on these subjects. And as always, if you've never obeyed the gospel you're not a child of God. We'd love to talk with you further about that. If you're struggling with a porn problem and you need help, contact us, call us, write us. We'd be glad to put you in contact with folks who might can help you with that and offer some help as well. And may God bless each of us as we strive to live our lives with a pure, holy, and right life. God bless you till we join again. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for the gospel of christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone is the